All right. Trying out the DJI Osmo 3 handheld gimbal. Pretty sweet, really. Pretty good job of holding the camera for me. EMS. Here, as you can see, we get a little meter hooked up. The Hall effect. I'm trying out this little guy here to the ISDT Air. H605. Pretty handy little charger for 50 watts. 50 watts balancing. Nothing too exciting. I just need to get my tripod so I don't have to hold this thing all the time. And I uh, might start making a few videos. I got a pile of different things from Amazon and different places to try over here and kind of give my opinion on some things that are kind of, I don't know, some I think are perhaps junk, some aren't. I mean, it all depends on what you're trying to get out of each one of these. This little guy goes with this. Plug that in there. There you go, you got 13.2 volts. It's not showing any draw right now because there isn't any. 37 amp hour battery. 26,650. K2 Energy EV cells in uh, 4S 10P for a total of 37 amp hours. Yeah, all brand new cells I got from Battery Hookup. Custom made boards I got from uh, a guy on the Jehu forum hooked me up with those. Uh, Bong, the uh, overseas connection, let's call it, on this one. So he, he made me some PCBs, and uh, yeah, I'm going to make some new cabling here pretty quick. Just wanted to give the BMS a try. I don't really think it's going to ever do 100 amps, but I mean, I'm not going to try to put 100 amps through it. So, there you go. We got a bunch of 5 amp fuses there. So, I mean, really, the most you could try to pull from that pack would be 50 amps before the fuses start to go anyway. So, yeah, so I'll probably keep it under 50 amps and might hook it up to a small inverter and package it up here, but might package up the battery separately, some sort of a housing, and just put some connectors on it because I mean being that it's life life po 4 you can just charge it with a 12 volt charger if you really wanted to but uh, I'll probably be a little bit more careful how I charge it just to make sure the the uh, the cell banks all charge uh, you know balance charge out properly I'll probably throw balance charger on it every so often and yeah and uh, plans to get a probably a hundred watt solar panel to tinker around with too 
to go with this setup. It's sitting on the bench here. Yeah, and probably a thousand watt inverter. Nothing uh, much bigger than that, I don't think. Um, being that I'm going to be limited by the fuses and the connections and can't really see myself hooking a 2000 watt inverter up to it. I mean, it's not that it wouldn't work, but uh, I just don't see myself pulling that much out of it. Uh, and if you put a little bit of a load on there, it will, will register on the little ammeter. We've gone through the settings. It's kind of an annoying little thing. They never have instructions from any of this stuff that comes from China. So you kind of have to go through the settings. Yeah, sometimes you get a weird one like this one's got the screen has kind of a shiny spot on the screen and nowhere else. You know, typical of someone's fingerprints on the LCD. Before they packaged it up but yeah it's a Wi-Fi oh Wi-Fi reader which is kind of nice you can you can go ahead and plug that into USB onto pretty much anything you want let's just take that over here we can just plug that into a different USB here and there you go comes back on and Gives you all the readings from the from this little white box over here. So you got your you got your meter, you got your little Wi-Fi doohickey on the back that just plugs in there. It's not a bad way of doing it. It's just a little little chip. This is supposed to do read up to 80 volts, 200 amps on the meter, so it should be more than I need for just something just for a display for on the outside of the battery pack um you know let you know what you're drawing if you're drawing something for an inverter what have you but yeah it's kind of nice you don't have to power it off your pack if you don't want to you could plug it in uh you know somewhere else in your rv or somewhere else in your truck and plug it in the front of your truck and see what your battery's doing in the back or what have you i'm probably going to use mine for multitude of different things got my little workstation here a little bluetooth keyboard a little, uh, little tablet gives me something to look at and I can watch some of jehu's videos while i build me a build me a battery yeah i played with a few things now some made myself a uh, lithium ion powered uh, camping lantern i don't quite see that there but a couple 18650s in the uh, in the Coleman Lantern, so that gives me some some light when we're out camping. And yeah, I got one of these little drop boxes hiding in there that I've tried out. We can we can talk about that one day. What else we got here? Yeah, my some of these little cell checkers, which eh, I don't know, pretty gimmicky, honestly. Almost wouldn't waste your money for the inaccuracy of their readings of the, uh, you know, the cells. Because neither one of the ones I bought was accurate. So, kind of might be something that you want to take into consideration before you go and buy one of these. Because it's, they work. But, uh, seem to be the two that I got were pretty inaccurate. One from the other, so not something that necessarily want to throw away a couple bucks on if you're not looking for just a real cheap cheesy way of checking in fact i think i'd stick with my multimeter even though it doesn't have that extra decimal point of the the millivolt scale the uh you know the um let's say let's say the hundredths of a volt the second decimal place basically or the second place after the decimal for lack of a kind of can't think of what it is called right now but i'm pretty sure that is a uh you've got tenths and you've got hundredths so i believe it'd be the hundredths of a millivolt 
that my meter doesn't read, but like I say, cell checker, not very accurate. This ISDT also mm, questionable. Um, it, uh, it seems to be more accurate, but, uh, like I say, hard to know without really getting a good quality meter, something that shows you, you know, the millivolts and it's, it's going to be calibrated to that hundredth of a hundredth place kind of thing. Um, if, if you want to get really picky in what you're checking your cells out, I mean, I don't think you really got to get that picky, but it's, uh, as long as you're not off by this little balancer seemed to, uh, equalize them right up, just hooked it up, left it and seemed to balance out the cells nicely. They were, they were all bang on. So I just went ahead and checked with my meter and they all seem to be good. So there you go. There's the first PCB project we're calling it Gatton Systems after my late father who was an electronics technician and that was the name of his uh, disbanded company Gatton Systems so in honor of his achievements as a tech uh, I've got some you know skills and motivation from him and you know some hopefully some natural talent remains to be seen but i mean this is a pretty simple project just about anybody with small amount of electrical knowledge and i mean you need to know the basics but uh you know if you if you're careful you can uh you know you can always make a couple mistakes too and things won't go t too terribly bad i had to replace all these fuses because uh i uh reversed the polarity on the pack when i was going to charge it so there you go it can it can happen and i mean i did use some of these connectors in a reverse configuration which was kind of a dumb idea but just trying to use up the whole lot of connectors that i had and i had a bunch of those and uh yeah i didn't realize at the time that by putting those on there they're actually uh reversing the polarity on it so that's why that's marked that's actually supposed to be the negative side but that's the positive side of the pack so there you go a couple things i would do differently i would probably do something differently with these um xt connectors here next time and uh pretty soon this will be be uh kind of this will be getting connected to some sort of a bus bar um or some sort of a terminal block setup on the outside of the battery with a binding post or something of that nature Anyways, thanks a lot. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, look out for the next one.